Hey there, fellow nerds. Welcome back to Nerdtown, where we dissect, celebrate, and sometimes give a good-natured ribbing to your favorite films and TV shows. Today, we've got something that's been lodged in my brain like an earworm from the 80s. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Beetle. Wait a minute! Wait. I'm not tempting fate by saying it a third time. Who knows if he's sneaking up behind me, ready to stir up trouble? So grab your popcorn, buckle up, and let's dive into this delightfully offbeat sequel. All right, let's dive into Beetlejuice 2. And don't worry, I'm keeping this spoiler free. You won't need to dodge plot twists like Neo in The Matrix. I'll touch on a few key points because this is a review, not an exclusive club. Just keep in mind what follows is my raw, unfiltered opinion. And trust me, my thoughts are anything but subtle. Oh boy. Do I have thoughts. So, let's dig up some graves and chat about it. Because the juice is loose. Beetlejuice is practically sacred to me. It's the holy grail of Tim Burton's uniquely bizarre imagination. Imagine creativity so wild, it's like someone tossed an art class into a blender and hit puree. The original film was less a traditional narrative and more a collection of fantastically absurd sketches, and somehow it worked. The setup? A deceased couple enlists a ghostly exorcist to scare off the living. And who better than Beetlejuice, a poltergeist with the social finesse of a raccoon on a caffeine binge? The original Beetlejuice? It had it all. A Danny Elfman score that hits harder than any Halloween playlist. Practical effects so imaginative they make CGI look like it's in timeout. And, of course, Michael Keaton doing whatever it is he does best as Beetlejuice. It's chaotic, it's loud, and it's utterly timeless. I watch this movie once a year, religiously. It's aged better than the finest wine. Seriously. Beetlejuice is like that unforgettable ex you can't stop thinking about because they were just that incredible. Fast forward to today and Burton's making a comeback. But let's be real, his career has been a bit of a roller coaster. After Alice in Wonderland, Burton started to resemble that high school star who keeps trying to relive their glory days. His recent films began to feel like he lost the plot, literally. So naturally, I was a tad skeptical about Beetlejuice 2. Could Timmy B still deliver the weirdness without drowning it in CGI? So, what's the sequel all about? We jump decades ahead, and Lydia Dietz, our goth queen, is now hosting a paranormal talk show. Yep, Lydia is basically Ghost Oprah now, and I'm totally on board with that. She's got a daughter, Astrid, played by Jenna Ortega. Talk about a touch of Wednesday Adams. And, of course, mother and daughter are about as connected as Wi-Fi in a concrete bunker. But here's the twist. When Lydia's father passes away, they're thrust into a reunion in the most Beetlejuice way imaginable. Yep, Beetlejuice is back in the mix. He's tangled up in some underworld shenanigans, and it's as messy, chaotic, and delightfully Beetlejuicy as ever. Think of it as The Godfather 2, but with supernatural mobsters who've got a knack for campy antics. I gotta do a photo shoot for GQ in about an hour and a half. <sighs> so, I went into this movie with two hopes. Please don't let this turn into another lazy cash grab sequel. And please give me something fresh. And while the film does flirt with both of those lines, I have to admit, it doesn't ruin the original. This sequel manages to stay in its lane without veering off the nostalgia highway into fan service overload. But let's dive into that fan service, because, oh boy, it's definitely present. Case in point. Remember that Deo Banana Boat song from the first movie? It makes a comeback, this time at Charles's funeral. A funeral. I mean, what better tribute to a beloved character than by playing a song that literally terrorized him in the original, right? a bit clunky and definitely winks at us diehard fans. But seriously, not every scene needs to shout, hey, remember this from 1988? But let me tell you what actually works. First up, the film's look. It's pure old school Burton magic. We're talking wild camera angles, mind-bending underworld designs, and a cast of quirky characters that could fill an entire freak show. The set pieces, absolutely stellar. 
It's as if they took the original Beetlejuice's eccentricity, cranked it up to 11, and added a splash of neon for good measure. It's a visual feast, no doubt. And now, the main event. Michael Keaton is back as Beetlejuice, and wow, does he deliver. They didn't overexpose him, which is a stroke of genius because it makes his appearances even more impactful. Whenever things slow down or start to drag, Keaton bursts onto the screen like a sugar-fueled Tasmanian devil, instantly ramping up the energy. He's the embodiment of perfect chaos. That said, there's one plot point that left me scratching my head. Why is Beetlejuice suddenly serenading Lydia like it's some bizarre ghost rom-com? In the original, his interest in her was all about escaping the underworld, not about having a Hallmark Channel moment. It's odd, and not in the good weird Tim Burton sense, but more like, this feels like a drunken afterthought weird. As for the rest of the cast, Catherine O'Hara returns as Delia, but I have to say, something's off. She was iconic in the first movie, completely unhinged and hilarious. This time around, though, they've turned her into a caricature of her former self. It's as if they thought you liked her quirky? Let's crank that up to 100. But instead of enhancing her chaos, she comes off as watered down. Sad face. Now let's talk about the messy bits. The dialogue? Yikes. There's so much exposition. It feels like the characters are auditioning to be Wikipedia editors. And the pacing? slower than a sloth on vacation. It's all over the place. One minute we're in the underworld, the next we're back in the real world navigating Lydia's emo teenage drama. It's as if Tim Burton had too many ideas and just threw them all in. What? Hoping something would stick. So, is this movie a must watch? Uh, nah. But if you're a diehard Beetlejuice fan or just want to see Michael Keaton absolutely killing it once more, it's worth checking out. It's not quite old school Burton, but it's not a complete Alice in Wonderland CGI disaster either. One minute tea time. Tea time forever. Hello, Alice. Think of it as a happy medium, a spooky medium, if you will. So. What do you think, nerds? Are you excited for Beetlejuice 2? Or giving it the side eye like an expired carton of milk? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And as always, stay nerdy, my friends.